Coming up tonight on the News at 5, where a new New York Times poll says Montana candidates stand with less than two weeks to Election Day. Plus, you have just a few days left to weigh in on Great Falls' new wayfinding plan. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Jessica Nelson. Thank you for joining us. While snow is falling and conditions are deteriorating in the Helena Valley, use caution on area roads. We have reporters on the scene of a crash near I-15 and Prospect. Interstate traffic is down to one lane in the northbound direction. And remember, if you are approaching an area where emergency crews are working, please slow down and move to the far lane to give them room to work. We're going to head over to Curtis now for details on all this snow. Yeah, emergency crews and also anytime you have a tow truck or a flatbed working on the side of the road, get over, leave as much space, leave yourself a little extra time if you have to travel. Uh, multiple crashes reported out there already and you can see why the road conditions rapidly deteriorating here as snow is now reaching streaking all the way out through the central part of the state. It's snowing around Lewistown, of course, around Helena, Great Falls, Cup Bank, and Missoula. We've been looking at snow for the last several hours. Winter storm warning for most of the state. Blizzard warning for the Rocky Mountain front for some very treacherous travel as we go through tonight into tomorrow. As much as 20 inches of snow as cold as 20 below zero. That's without the wind. And I'll let you know when we may be having a meltdown as a state here with warmer temperatures moving in coming up in the forecast. The state reported 863 new COVID-19 cases, pushing the statewide total to over 27,000. Just under a third of those cases are currently active. There were seven new deaths reported overnight, bringing the statewide total to 300. Active hospitalizations currently sit at 353. It is good to remember that our MTN numbers do vary from those reported by state officials. We track data from the state and local health departments to give you the most up-to-date information available. As coronavirus cases surge in Cascade County, community leaders are coming together, asking you to do your part to keep others safe. They say wearing masks and social distancing could help us avoid more restrictions. As MTN Zach Shermley reports, it comes as we're learning more tonight about which businesses are following public health rules and which ones are not. Tonight, we're learning the Cascade City County Health Department has sent orders of corrective action to three businesses. On August 13th, CCHD was notified that Strobel's rental in Great Falls was not complying with mask orders. Owner Kevin Pearson told MTN News the business is doing everything they can, spraying down and sanitizing equipment short of requiring people to wear masks. But masks have been scientifically proven to reduce the spread of the virus. Walmart on 10th Avenue South and Big Sky Deli in Vaughn were also cited. Their owners declined our request for comment. That's just why we're pleading just, you know what, let's all do the right thing. Let's all do the right thing for our customers, our employees, and to keep our community safe and definitely reduce the impact on the hospitals. Shane Etzweiler of the Great Falls Chamber, one of many business leaders leading the call tonight for something to change. There are discussions taking place right now that they're, uh, they're talking about further restrictions and no one in our community can afford that. We don't want that. We want people to still go on and, and uh, live their lives, but also with the understanding that we need to protect each other. And being a responsible thing is masking up so you're protecting others. Wearing our masks, we're keeping our distance, we are sanitizing and washing hands. These are the important steps that we can take to keep our businesses open. Most businesses in Great Falls are, are doing things right so they don't have to close down. For a community to thrive, survive whatever comes near them. And if we all just do simple little steps, it's going to help us all out in the end. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. 
The stay-at-home order on the Blackfeet Reservation will remain in place for another two weeks. As we have reported, the order was scheduled to expire on Sunday, but Tribal Council voted this week to extend it to November 8th because of the number of cases in Glacier County, where the reservation is located, and on the reservation itself. This is the second time it has been extended. The order is phase one of the reservation's phased reopening plan, which was released this week. Hopefully we hit a good plateau where it um, is uh, safe to, to kind of have some phased reopenings, I guess, but I don't foresee that in the near future. I see that maybe after the new year. Today, the New York Times released its poll of Montana voters on the state's top races, and in every one, it showed the Republican candidates with a slight lead. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison has more. The poll taken earlier this week shows President Donald Trump leading Democrat Joe Biden in Montana, but only by 49 to 43 percent. Trump won the state four years ago over Hillary Clinton by 20 percentage points. In the state's biggest race, Republican U.S. Senator Steve Daines leads Democratic challenger Governor Steve Bullock 49 to 46 percent. For governor, it has Republican Greg Gianforte with a 48 to 44 percent lead over Democrat Mike Cooney. And in the race for Montana's only U.S. House seat, Republican Matt Rosendale is up 50 to 46 percent over Democrat Kathleen Williams. The Times and his polling partner Sienna College surveyed about 750 likely Montana voters earlier this week, and the margin of error for the poll is plus or minus 4.4 percent. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The poll is similar to other recent polls, which have shown of Montana's major races to be relatively close and generally within the margin of error. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the Montana VA healthcare system went all out in pink to raise awareness and encourage screenings. Today, nurses, doctors, technicians, and administration donned their sharpest shades of pink to provide encouragement to those battling the disease. Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers and manageable if caught early. It's recommended that women in their 40s or older get a mammogram each year. While October may be the designated Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the Montana VA says people should be thinking about it year round. Really what we, is, we encourage is on a monthly basis for women to do some type of um, self-exam. They're the first ones to be able to catch if something's not quite right, but it is a year round. And honestly, it's not just women, it's men as well. The VA recommends if anyone discovers lumps or swelling in their chest, they are urged to contact their primary physician for a consultation. A veterans group received a big donation in Great Falls today. Vets for Vets is a nonprofit group of combat veterans and community volunteers. Every year, Lithia Dodge presents the group with a check, and this year the money will go towards a scholarship and the Grace Home Veterans Center. Some of the money will also help Alliance for Youth, another local nonprofit. The group's co-founder says he is grateful for the community's support. We really appreciate what Lithia has done for us over the years. And like I say, uh, this check will go for, for the Grace Home and, uh, and uh, homeless veterans and for our scholarship foundation that we've set up. Vets for Vets serves veterans in five different counties. Well, you've only got three days left to give your thoughts on Great Falls' plan to make finding your way around easier. The draft version of the Great Falls Wayfinding Plan is available online. It's a plan for putting up decorative signs throughout the city, guiding people to points of interest. That includes places like the CM Russell Museum and Giant Springs State Park. Assuming public comments don't create the need for major changes to the plan, the first signs could go up soon. This is going to help boost our self-esteem because we have so many incredible assets to offer. I think the community is going to have their eyes opened as to all of the numerous assets. We do have a link to the plan and how you can submit a comment on this story on our website. When we come back, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenens has a complete breakdown of the snowy forecast. And coming up later, a recap of last night's final presidential debate. Stay tuned for more. Starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, the snow continues to come down at a good clip. Take a look at uh, Monarch here. Visibility reduced by the snow. East Glacier 
You can see the Two Medicine Bridge there, where we are under a blizzard warning off of the Rocky Mountain Front, including East Glacier and Browning. Rogers Pass continues to pile up the snow. Bowman's Corner, visibility down, looks like about a mile or so. Boulder Pass, Boulder Hill Interstate 15, looks like we only have one really, uh, one lane with at least pavement showing. And same goes up Interstate 15 around the Dearborn area. Pretty slick uh, through the Wolf Creek Canyon area. Great Falls, 15 degrees. Degrees. Feels like five out there right now, and we've got some steady snow coming down. And Helena, that snow has picked up in intensity. It's 25 degrees, and those temperatures will be dropping. We'll join uh, the rest of the state into the teens here tonight. But uh, teens, 20s, couple of 30s out there. Cold enough for that snow to certainly stick on all surfaces. Now, talk a lot about the snow, but this storm will also bring in record cold, dangerous cold. Tomorrow, look at these wind chill values, 12 below in Helena, 10 below around uh, Buttes, a lot of central western Montana, down below zero for wind chills as we go through the day on Saturday. Now, Saturday night into Sunday morning, Look at some of these wind chill values, actual air temperatures Sunday morning. A lot of us likely down between zero and 10 below. Some of those normally colder spots about 20 below zero. That's without the wind chill. Snow forecast, okay, mountains up to 20, right in the center of the state, 8 to about 16 inches of snow, a little lighter amounts uh, up here in north central Montana, the northwestern part of the state. But basically, anywhere you're traveling, with the exception of far northeastern Montana, you will run into snow. You'll run into snow, wind, and uh, visibility that will really be hindered by the blowing of that snow here for the Rocky Mountain front. That's why we're under a blizzard warning until 9 o'clock tomorrow evening. The snow continues to march eastward through the central part of the state. Boy, it started out nice and sunny here for a lot of the state in the morning hours. And now we are looking at this moderate to even occasionally heavy snow coming down where you see those darker shades of blue, some solid snow coming down the Rocky Mountain front here. And that snow will continue to push its way out into eastern Montana through the overnight hours. So uh, if you don't have to travel tonight, tomorrow, maybe wait until Sunday. It'll be a, a little bit better if you do have have to travel, have that winter emergency kit in your car, the blankets, uh, the extra set of gloves, hats, flashlights, batteries, maybe a few snacks as well, uh, because you don't want to get stuck out in conditions like this. Snow through tonight, through most of tomorrow, but heading into the afternoon, look at that northern edge of the snow slowly pushing towards the south, and we should see the snow coming to an end after dark tomorrow night. Now the clouds break up here heading into Sunday morning. It's fresh snow on the ground, clear skies, high pressure settling right over and we will have a very, very cold start to the Sunday. Again, most of the state will be down below zero, setting records, shattering records. Sunday will be sunny. It will be cold. Once again, there's that accumulation of the heaviest right here in the central and west central part of the state here. Uh, through the uh, day here on Saturday. That's when the accumulation will stop. But more specifically, a few locations. Helena out in the valley, maybe about eight inches. The hills around town, 16, 18 inches of snow possible. Great Falls right around a foot. Same goes for Lewistown. Lighter amounts, Haver and Glasgow way out uh, the high line here. But uh, tonight, look at the cold. I mean, this is something, okay, you would expect in uh, December or January, but it's October and we've got... Cold temperatures, a lot of snow coming down, the wind increasing, not as much snow northeast Montana, but a snowy night, central areas, and also certainly snowy throughout the Helena area tonight. Tomorrow, blizzard warning again all day long for Augusta, Shoto, Browning, up there, Bab, uh, Cup Bank, Conrad included in that blizzard warning. Lighter snows out here east of Malta and Hinsdale, really uh, south of the High Line is where we'll have a few inches accumulate. North of the High Line, little to nothing. Lewistown, solid snow all day long. And around Helena, solid snow all day long as well. Here's the seven day forecast. Big changes over the next seven days. We're cold and snowy and winter like here through the weekend into early next week. Record lows likely Saturday night and Sunday night, but we're up into the 40s and even 50 degrees by late next week and four great falls near record lows here. Uh, certainly for tomorrow night, but a little Chinook wind developing Sunday night. Blowing snow may be an issue on Monday, but look at those temperatures going up into the 50s, even 60 by next Friday. 
The final presidential debate is in the books and now the final sprint to election day. NBC's Susan McGinnis has a wrap up of a debate that looked very different than the last one. Candidates for president in the final sprint to election day after their final face off Thursday night. President Trump traveling to Florida to rally seniors. Democrat Joe Biden staying at home in Delaware to focus on pandemic and the economy. And today, each side claiming victory in last night's debate. Last night was very, very successful. We've gotten great reviews, great polls, great everything. Last night, we saw the president of the United States lie to the American people and repeatedly lie about the state of this pandemic. Positive assessments from the two teams following a surprisingly substantive exchange covering issues from race to climate change to coronavirus. With cases surging nationwide, hitting a new record 77,000 cases yesterday. We're rounding the turn. We're rounding the corner. It's going away. We're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter. And he has no clear plan. While Biden hit the president hard on his handling of COVID, the president walked Biden into a potentially costly comment on oil. It has to be replaced by renewable energy over time, over time. And I'd stop giving to the oil industry, I'd stop giving them federal subsidies. As he is Mr. going president? to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President, with more than 50 million Americans already having voted, they'll spend the next 11 days trying to win over the rest. Susan McGinnis, NBC News, Washington. 2020 has changed sports, but it has also had an impact on cheerleaders. We head to Great Falls for this story up next. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back with us. Lots of people look forward to crosstown football games every year. And as MTN's Isaiah Dunk tells us, that's especially the case this year. I'm here at Memorial Stadium where the crosstown football game between Great Falls High and CMR is set for tomorrow night. Now this game usually draws the biggest crowd of the year. And this year there's one group hoping that continues. It's been a strange year for the cheerleaders at Great Falls High and CMR thanks to COVID-19. Start with small crowd sizes. With the limited number of spectators and who we're cheering for, we're still there for the team and the fans. Um, but the biggest change for us is, is definitely the lack of students um, and the energy and, and the, just the spirit from fans. Then add in face masks, limited stunts, and restrictions on where they can stand. Spirit squads and coaches have seen the fundamental purpose of their activity challenged this year. But despite those challenges, they rise up. I just try to remember I'm a wrestler, like this is my senior year and I'm gonna try to make it like the best that I can. So we're gonna pump this crowd up, the little crowd that we have. Uh, we're super thankful that we get the opportunity to still go out there with all COVID and everything. We're really lucky. And even with all the factors going against them, there's more to the season than the difficulties. This has honestly been one of my favorite years with a lot of the relationships that I've formed. It's a great experience when you have somebody next to you that you get along with and that you have fun with. And it just, it really changes that dynamic when you go from, oh, there's no one in the stands to, I've got my best friend right here. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. In Great Falls, Isaiah Dunk, MTN Sports. All right, stay with us. We'll check in with Curtis one last time. When we welcome our West Coast viewers, the grim new projection of COVID deaths and the new study into what saves lives. We'll have that plus the future of in-person shopping and how retailers are remaking the experience ahead on Nightly News. From Montana's news leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. All right, welcome back. Last check of the weather, and uh, we can see that snow here really increasing across the state. And it's about this time tomorrow that the snow will start to wind down here. And after that, when the uh, clouds clear out tomorrow night, look at that low, eight below in Gray Falls. We're going to shatter record lows uh, tomorrow night. Sunday, a cold day, sunny, 15 for the high. Look at next week. Yeah, warmer air, but it's a Chinook wind that will blow around the snow initially before it melts it. And uh, for the Helena area, snowy tonight, snowy tomorrow, record cold likely Saturday night and Sunday night. All right, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Be safe out there and have a wonderful rest of your weekend.